Welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Tuesday, November 9th. Government is going back to the drawing board on the proposed introduction of safe zones to help contain the COVID-19 pandemic. Word of this from Health and Wellness Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick today as he admitted that implementation of the new policy has not been smooth. Let me say to you, and, and I cannot, I will not say very much about safe zones at this time and why. I'm having a number of meetings between today and tomorrow with various stakeholders because it is obvious that some things have not gone right in relation to the rollout of the safe zones and uh, there are some issues being raised by various entities, BAM for one for example, and some of the issues that I have heard of are legitimate concerns, legitimate issues. So my intent along with the team at the ministry is to listen to what the stakeholders have to say, the issues that they have. We will dialogue and I will be come to the press before the week is out to be able to address this matter fully with all of the relevant information. I can also say that there are some things that I intend to take to cabinet on Thursday so that the Prime Minister and Cabinet can make some determinations. The safe zones will first be rolled out for the health sector, unvaccinated employees at all healthcare institutions, including nursing homes, private hospitals, senior citizens' homes, dental offices, doctor's offices, testing sites, quarantine facilities, and isolation facilities will be tested for COVID-19 at least once every 42 days. Unvaccinated employees, on the other hand, must be tested once weekly or as often as the chief medical officer determines. Meanwhile, government is on a mission to boost the number of nurses in the healthcare system. And according to Minister Bostic, it's again seeking to recruit nurses from Ghana to ensure the quality of care remains high for all patients. The Prime Minister would have spoken to the President of Ghana at the United Nations uh, meeting a few weeks ago. And they're in the process of trying to make that happen so that we can get those additional nurses. And not so much because of the surge but because we recognize clearly that there's more to public health than the pandemic. And we have to continue with the NCD clinics and all the other things that we, with the prenatal and so forth. We cannot drop the ball in that regard. If not, we're going to have problems of another kind, especially with the NCDs. And trust me, there are you're more likely to get more deaths from NCDs right now than even COVID, even though we have the surge. So we recognize these things, and that is why we are reorganizing and restructuring. In today's COVID-19 update, health authorities confirmed 411 new coronavirus infections from 2,255 tests. Of this number, 98 persons were under the age of 18, and 313 were 18 years and older. There were 896 people in isolation facilities and 6,661 in home isolation. Under the National Vaccination Program, the total number of persons fully vaccinated is 130,367 persons. That's 48.1% of the total population or 57.1% of the eligible population. In other news, the promised 150 emergency prefabricated houses from China are set to arrive in the island next week. Housing, Land and Maintenance Minister Dr. William Dugid gave this update today as he reported on government's ongoing program to repair and rebuild houses affected by the freak storm and Hurricane Elsa. Dr. Dugid said work has already started on the foundations for the houses from China. And we'll try to get those up as well as quickly as possible to again house people in those as transition houses before we then move them over to their other house or at, well, those that have land to be able to access their land and put foundations on those on their land to be able to get houses for them. So it is a con is an effort that is huge, uh, lots of entities working together and uh, working to the common goal which is to get people's houses repaired or to get people's houses rebuilt where necessary. So far, the ministry has mobilized repairs to 266 houses, of which 108 have been completed. And out of 134 rebuilds, 16 are finished. 
Admitting that the process has not been moving as swiftly as he would like, Minister Bostic said his ministry continues to mobilize additional contractors to get more rebuilds and repairs done so that displaced Barbadians can get back into their homes as soon as possible. There are a total of 540 in total rebuilds and 680, I think it is, are repairs. But all the time we're getting more, um, continue to get more reports trickling in. Uh, so those numbers tend to fluctuate a bit. There were more, num more reports, but some of those reports were rental accommodation, really are not doing rental accommodation, and others were businesses, and we're really not doing businesses. We're doing mainly residential houses. So we once we weeded out the businesses and the rental accommodation, and we just stuck to re the residential houses, those are the numbers that we came to. But we just got reports, I believe Urban Development Commission just got reports of another 200 so we're not doing assessments to assess those and go forward on those as well. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Guyana's Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony says children ages 5 to 11 are likely to get their Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine by the end of the month. The move comes as authorities push for wider vaccination to return the country to normalcy, including a return to full face-to-face -face classes. We are uh, waiting the final documentation from the U.S. CDC. Um, we know that they had these discussions both at the FDA level and then the CDC level and so we are waiting on some they normally would issue some reports we want to see those reports before we started um, that process nevertheless in anticipation that this is going to happen we have already started doing the training here locally uh, because the dosage is different so it's going to be one-third of the dose that an adult would get and so we are already training our staff to be able to uh, get the dosing right. And um, we are planning maybe by the end of the month to start rolling this out. On the international front, the conflict in Ethiopia's Tigray region could spiral into a civil war. The United Nations Security Council issued the warning today as rebels threatened to march on the capital. The message to the Security Council is clear. Time is short. The window to secure a mediated settlement to the conflict is closing. In a country of over 110 million people, over 90 different ethnic groups and 80 languages, no one can predict what continued fighting and insecurity will bring. But let me be clear. What is certain is that the risk of Ethiopia descending into a widening civil war is only too real. The council was addressed remotely by the African representative leading mediation efforts. All these leaders here in Addis Ababa and in the north agree individually that the difference between them are political and require political solution through dialogue. They therefore constitute a window of opportunity but the High Representative warned that this window of opportunity is small. The Ethiopian ambassador made his country's position clear. We remind everyone concerned there are no two parties here. There is a government representing the whole of the Ethiopian people and representing the Ethiopian state. 
and there is a group advancing its criminal cause through atrocities. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.